Hello everyone for a new video. So the last five days we've been doing Magic Fine, which is what you see in the background here. This is one of the maps I ran towards the end. Uh, the only thing, Pluggo Bass. I did have a part before this. I accidentally had a different belt on. So I switched it to this belt. This is, this is the belt I use for five day, four days, part of five. That one, This one will be in the POB description below. And then also the Scarabs I was using, We'll talk about it at the end. I did have that one. It just got ripped at the end. But pretty much the magic find, it's a lot of people are doing this right now. You can do T3, T... I think it's 6, 10, 12, or 14. T3 is the easiest because you don't need a good build at all. Like how this one is. I don't have cap resist. One resist is not even capped. Our damage is not high. We don't even have 3k life. Build super squishy. It's pretty fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. I originally did this because I wanted to get the Mage Blood. So when I started the, this project, I needed 60 exalts. Overnight, Mage Blood kept shooting up, and I said, screw it today. And just end up buying Headhunter instead and going back to Headhunter build. So it's fun. The thing with Magic Fine is you want to have at least over around 70 quant, which you get through a lot of the gear. The rings, the... Uh, rings, your boots, gloves, your biggest one, your belt's optional. Headhunter is good too for doing this kind of stuff. You want speed. If you don't have that, go cheap route, go Biscos. But use Biscos for so long, it does the job pretty well. Unless you're doing like a high tier, like tw 10, 12, I recommend Headhunter. You're running double inspired learnings for Headhunter buffs. It's pretty good uh, method. You sustain your maps pretty easily. I'll talk about how I did that in this. So I did the T3 strat. Another person I'm playing um, in my clan did a is doing the T12 strategy, and he's ma you do make more money on higher tier. He's passed me in the amount of doctors, uh, amount of nurses that drop for him, and he's also gotten a lot better random drops with unnaturals and all that kind of stuff. My best random drop was. The Mirror Shard Divination card I dropped at the end and the like a Prism Guardian, that was pretty much it. Most of my drops were garbage. It's pretty much also when I was running these, always scourge your maps. I would always scourge tower maps. If they were like Simulacrum Splinters, the Legion um, Splinters, the Breach ones, the Expedition Currency ones, I would let those go straight up to 10. Or if they hit 6,000 damage in a certain element, I rip it automatically out because you can't take any more than that. The build cannot do the 3,000 the 3, Fizz one. That will one-shot you automatically, so those are all rips. And then a lot of them, if I saw they were garbage, I just pull them and ran them normally like a normal um, tower map. So you sustain maps pretty easily with this. All you really do is put your washstones in. Active, um, activate your map device to start the map and take all the washstones out and all you'll get a lot of good um, T T3 maps. It's hard to do with the higher tier you get, but it can be done. It's pretty well. Washstones I'll go over at the end it, with this. It's pretty bad. I was using. They were all garbage. And you do realize I do die in this a lot. I am playing a very squishy build. So you should expect to die if you're doing T3, especially with my kind of gear. This is the same build that MBX did. It's very cheap to get going. The most expensive item in this whole entire build is the Inspire Learnings. When I bought them, they were four exalts. Now they're up to seven. So the build is going up in price due to the amount of people wanting to play this this league. Because Scourge makes Magic Fine extremely strong with the fact that each one of the buffs on there is an extra 2% quant. So you're pretty much looking at about four to 500 quant when you're running these maps. And this build can easily hit the 300 mark pretty well. If you long as just go in and out a lot and just keep killing monsters nonstop. And pretty much, um, a lot of stuff like Sextants, I was using the Cartographer one just because it's more maps and every tower map that drops is a free four or five chaos if you don't need it. So I was selling tower maps nonstop the ambush one, just for getting uh, six links, because it drops a lot of crap to six links from there, nonstop. Um, breach, rusted breach, just for more density monsters. And 
The other one was the divination, the divination one. When I first started doing this, divination one was super cheap. Now they're sitting around nine, ten chaos a piece, which I would probably would say is not worth it. Yes, it's nice if you get a nurse because it pays for it, but if you don't get the nurse, you're ripping a lot of currency just for twelve scarabs. So is it worth it? Probably not. I would probably recommend, you know, maybe dropping a divination if it's if it's up there in value, and maybe just go. Um, like with a unique one or Elder's good too, but Elder's getting up there in price. A lot of the Scarab ones are very expensive right now. I forgot to talk about it a little bit. There we go. So Scarab one, the Scarabs just wash the price. You want to use Awakened Sextants when you're running these. If And roll your maps, you know, Corrupt is good too if you run them identified, all that kind of stuff. Just be careful with the, um, what you roll. Because pretty much for me, I was looking for like Nemesis 3 is very good. Beyond is good. It's very Beyond is very rippy. I would not do Beyond if you're doing Scourge 10 maps. It's pretty much a one-shot for this build. Uh, you don't need to use the um, Queen of Forest. You could definitely use the other chess piece that gives you the Quantum Rarity. I know people are doing that instead. Uh, you Rings are locked in. Rings are optional also. You can definitely run the Bender's Gamble instead if you want that out for more resistance. Because resistance on this build is a mess. It's extremely hard to get it. The only way I was able to do it with this build is Queen of the Forest with Scourge on it for more resistance. That was the only way I was able to cap out the resistance on this build at all. And then you can see that um, strong boxes are extremely profitable on this. And on the map device, I usually only roll beyond if it's a Nemesis map, uh, 3 map. If it's not a ne Nemesis 3, I usually skip beyond because I've had bad luck with beyond. I think Beyond's good if you're in the Beyond section, the bottom left, for all the Beyond profit. But pretty much for that, I just skip it. I probably would go more of the um, Ambush. I like the Ambush one. I found it's very profitable from doing this. It's, it drops a lot of maps too. That Corrupted helps with sustain. It's, it's fun to do this. I had a lot of fun doing the Magic Find for five days. That's pretty much the end of the map. And you don't need to kill a boss either. I always skip the boss. Because your boss damage is trash. You can kill him. It's just a struggle. Yeah, that's it with that. So let me show the beat. There we go. So I don't have the scarabs anymore. But this was the intro to it. I had the wrong belt on. So I had to restart it. Let's see if I go into it. Yeah, like watchstones. My watchstones are not good. I'll show them actually in game. It's a little bit easier. Show the scarabs. Yeah. So yeah, like you know, like rusted photography, breach, ambush, and div. If you have it, if you don't have divination, elder, whatever you can afford, and then ambush is mostly used most of the time. So pretty much the watchstones. You know, layout, I think you only need the four points. You don't need all five. You know, like Harbinger and Strongbox, the only two I recommend, are the only four. You really need these ones. You don't need this one. It doesn't do much. I've never seen a boss, mainly because your Delirium or Mirror doesn't last the whole map because of your Scourging. It's, when it takes you back, most of your Delirium ends. It's pretty much for like the 3% chance. Like, you know, the amount of Soul Fight you get is not good. Blight is not good with this build, so this is like the only other option. My Watchstones are not good. If you have big money, I would say get the 6% Quant. It's, that's the best in slot. I pretty just roll whatever I can get on these, but that's why I'm using Quant there. Another Quant. Like I'm using three Quants. And this one is just a 0.2% chance of being like fully linked. This one has procced a lot to give me a lot of the divine orbs. I probably have over 100 divines doing this because we, most maps were like two, three divines each. So this one procced a lot, so I kept it. Originally, I was going to roll over another quant one, but with the amount of times this procced, I just kept it. I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. So, go away. So, the build, this is, you know, it's pretty much a real lazy route I took on this build. There's definitely a much better version you can take. Like, Somad's doing, I think he's doing, like, T6 or T10 with a much better version. This is just a very cheap, lazy version. That's why I went with it. 
lazy is good for me. You know, Wind Ripper just corrupt one, six link it easy, easy save. It's pretty much just inspiration, elemental damage, Trinity, uh, GMP chain and tornado shot. You don't need tornado. You don't need to use tornado shot. Tornado shot is just nice because of the the clear it has, so it does help. You know, the Bodo's movement speed. And oh, I guess we're gonna spend all this. Six, twelve, twenty-four. Sure. So pretty much the Devoto. Get your lab enchant on there based on whatever weapon you're using. Uh, like for me, a tornado shot fire additional arrow. So I just went with it. They are a little bit expensive. They're hard to find. If you can find it, cool. If you can't, it don't matter. This is pretty much just movement speed. Movement speed is king when you're going through these. You want to get through quick. That's why I ended up going head on to eventually at one point. Come on. Thank you. So yeah, pretty much helmet. It's really cast on death portal. Because you die a lot. And this is like a lifesaver when you're going through this. Quiver, Rig Walls, this is the old school version. You definitely can use a much better Quiver than this. This is not the best one to use. It's, you know, Fork is nice. Projectile speed and damage is nice. Uh, double White Prior Rings for 30% quant for both of them. If you want to make your own Prior Rings, I made this, I did one of mine. Is get one, just buy the cheapest Prior Ring on the market. That's called, that's not corrupted. Get Vorky on your um, master, like the um, syndicate ready. Get him uh, Vorky and research, and just have him change it to a guaranteed white. So it makes it really easy to get your double white that way. It's pretty much your grace and uh, period of elements for your period of elements is pretty much where all your resistance comes from. So it's really important for the build. You know, Queen of the Forest this is how I fix my resistance with getting the twenty eight lightning on it. They are hard to find. It's just try to get if you can. And it's pretty much, you know, uh, where's you? Cast on damage taken, immortal call setup, and blood rage. Be careful, blood rage will kill you. I've died a lot because of it. And then on this one's optional. You can do dash and second win if you want. You know, flame dash, second win, just flame dash by itself. It's just dash without second wins. It feels really bad. And then boot, you know, the boots and gloves are the most common. Perfect roll. Try to go perfect roll if you can for the 30% quant. And it's pretty much, you know, your anonymous, your Herald of Ice and Enlighten. You don't need the Enlighten. This was left over from my last build, so I just put it on here. Without Enlighten, you still have 109 mana. Enlighten only gives you not that much at all. So it's definitely not needed at all. I probably recommend don't put it on here. I just had it, so I just used it type of thing. You know, Bisco, the cheap version. Expansion version, Headhunter. Because Bisco is nice because of the quant. Rampage is really good. And more rarity. You know, I have a portal in here. I've never used a portal, John. I keep forgetting about it. But Sedata's is only here for your quant. If you want to go expensive, you can always get a curse on, like a um, type of curse on hit type thing. And then Necklace, you know... You have the Bisco necklace, which is not the best. You have something like this with increased quant. And then just search for like all res. And then it's some type of stat. Uh, intelligence and strength are going to be your biggest problems. So I recommend at least trying to get a really high one of them on your uh, necklace. And then the other one, you can get through the tree by going with whichever one you need. If you don't need the 30 strength here, you definitely can go back down here and take the 10% life. It'll put you over, it gives you like 400 life. If you want the other off, you have more levels than me, you definitely can start scaling up this way for more intelligence, more damage, you know, more dex, more intelligence, damage, more life and strength, dex. Like this will give you a lot of life and it'll, it'll fix your um, attributes. I just don't have the levels to go that way. So that's why I had to switch it up a little bit and go that route. You know, your double inspire learnings. Just make sure you have the uh, four points so that it triggers inspire learning because it needs four of the big nose active. 
but it's pretty much your basic, you know. I recommend leveling this build a different build and just respect to magic fine at a high level. But it's pretty much, you know, mana reservation, your mana life, movement speed, spell suppression, Bloodborne offensive, elemental resistance, crit, you know, crit, life, life, uh, one, two, three, five, you have five points here, but you know, accuracy does help. If you do want to drop something for the four, you can definitely drop these three points, probably. If you don't need resist or, or this one for resistance, but it depends what up to you. This resistant is big, though. To, you know, get more points somewhere else is an option. You know, your huge crit wheel, damage, spell suppression, because you're pretty much your only defensive layer. Uh, this one, your gain fizzes extra random element. It helps your trinity active. That's why you want to go up this way. More damage. Your um, evasion rating. Defensive layer. Your second uh, in Inspire Learnings. The one point down here. Pretty basic to be honest. You know over here like your flash stuff. Your more projectile speed. Your more damage. Crits. Life. The usual setup. Nothing big with it. So it's pretty, that's pretty much it with the build. Just want to get a quick update we've been doing. So we've ended up farming in the five days, 16 nurses and 31 exalts dropped. It's, we had a couple of rough days. The first day was absolutely insane with eight uh, nurses. But then after the first day, it went pretty downhill. Second day was roughly like a quarter of the amount we farmed the first day, but a lot less hours. The next day after that was a little bit better. And then yesterday was really bad and today was mediocre. So it's definitely a big hit or miss. If you want to do something quick, tier three is a lazy method. And then when you're sustaining these, just remember when you put the map in, take these out. So you'll get, and make sure you favor the tower map. And then also in here, the only two points you need is the sextants and the washstone. That's it. You don't need anything else besides these two points. Because you never do tier 14s, so you're never triggering these. You don't trigger influence and low level. Xana's useless. So like really it's just these two that matter. Everything else doesn't make a single difference. I think that's pretty much it over everything I can think of. What else did we miss anything? Oh, flasks. Uh, to be honest, my flasks are real lazy. Whatever I had laying around. You know, corrupted blood, some evasion, some onslaught, phasing, and movement speed. It's pretty much it. They're all whatever I had laying around the use. I think that's everything. Grace, purity. You definitely don't need to go alternate quality gem. That was just has some money laying around. Why not? But build's very lazy. It's very good for what it does. It gets through extremely quick, like you saw in the video. If you have the currency to put head on to run this build, you probably can. I would probably recommend upping the tower map to like six or ten. It's just gonna be hard to sustain them, but you'll get a lot more out of it. And also, just make sure you watch the price of the scarabs. Because the scarab price is going to be very important. Like, Awakening Sextants, you want to get these. And then Scarabs, like, Breach, the ones over here, the uh, Strongbox one, the Div one, and the Map one are all the ones I kept using. Like, if you get Elder, Elder is extremely good. The Map one is definitely not needed. It just helps with sustain because they do sell bulk maps out very quickly and like breach is the cheapest just watch the prices i recommend of these if you can get them cheap good if you can't get them cheap i would recommend skipping whatever you can't afford and then focus mainly on the sextants are really big with this i found out sextants i say is number one buy them in sets of 30 to 3ks each it sucks but they do pay off very quickly like pick up all the ballgum currency because a lot of your currency is not going to come from the nurses and exalts. 
it's gonna come from all the bubble gum. Cause we sold a, I have a lot of bubble gum already. This this is actually a second wave of bubble gum currency. Like we probably got over three thousand jewelers, over a thousand fusings, like two thousand of chromes. Like you get a lot of stuff, like ancient orbs. You'll get a lot of these from the harbingers. These sell very good right now. Uh, your tainted fusings will, your tainted items will sell. Sextants just keep converting. You know, simples. You'll get a lot of simple sextants. Keep converting them all up to awaken. That's what I kept doing. It helps to sustain a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Like you're gonna get a lot of the bubblegum stuff. Like I was chiseling all my maps also when I was running these. So I was chisel. You know, hit him with an orb of binding or alchemy orb and just corrupting him if you can. And hoping for the best. You don't need to corrupt them. Corrupting is like a, if you want to, recommend it. But it can rip a lot of their maps. Like, that's pretty much it, really. Like, Scourge. I recommend just keep an eye on Scourge. Scourge is a big one with running these. They do help. So you get, like, one of the big ones. You can definitely make a lot of currency. Like, from all the maps I ran, Expedition came up so many times. We ended up making a lot of... This was like around 80 or so to I started using them. But Expedition comes out a lot. It's big too on money. So like, I recommend if you want to have fun. If you have the currency, go get a better build than this one. This is like, I would say the base version to start with. And then you can upgrade solely to like Sonad's build. If you want to go up to higher tier. I'm pretty sure other people out there are doing like red tier magic finding with this. You want to make farm even more money. And just do whatever you can find comfortable also with scourge too try to find your balance with that because if your build squishy like this one we tried yellow tier maps we did complete them it's just they are very rippy because if you don't have the headhunter buffs yellow tier did kill me and it was hard to rebuild up once you died a couple times but just want to cut the video about this what we're doing the last couple days so we farmed the currency didn't get the item we wanted with it, so we ended up going a different route, which will be our next build. I'm hoping the build can do some acrims. That's one of my main focus I want to get going. Since that's something I wanted to do since the league, what since some acrims were announced. It's just getting the build that can handle wave 2930 is gonna be the hard part. So I hope the next build can do it, but we'll see. So if you like the video, please subscribe down below, come follow me on Twitch. And if you're doing magic, I hope you're having fun with it. And I hope to see you on the next one.